Hey everybody and welcome back to first in the series Cozy Mystery Review. I'm Amber and we're jumping into our third review of January. I hope everybody is staying nice and warm this winter. So <clears throat> our second book for, for January is The Pomeranian Always Barks Twice um, by Alex Erickson and I'll tell you what like this is super look at this this is super cute. So um I actually did enjoy this book. Um, there's a few criticisms that I have of it, but I did really enjoy this. And here's why. The the dog um, at the center of the book, Stewie, is actually the center. Um, it is very central in the story. And again, you've heard me say it before, but that's really important to me. If you show me a pet on the cover, like that pet better be... <laughs> really it's central in the book right like really up front in the book and Stewie definitely is so in this book we have uh, Liz who runs an animal rescue her husband is um, a veterinarian and even her children help out like I think her son Ben is actually working you know really working in that um, in that uh, animal rescue her kids are older uh, one's in college and one's in their 20s and um, they go to pick up Stewie, this Pomeranian, from um, Timothy, who is getting ready to move to, unfortunately, a nursing home, and has said, you know, I can't take him. Can you come get him? Well, when she goes to get him, all sorts of craziness ensues, and um, Timothy ends up dead. Somebody kills him. And her son is taken, uh, Liz's son, Ben, is taken into custody um, under suspicion for this murder. So, of course, that's how she gets drawn into this. Um, and I will say one of the things that I really liked uh, about what Alex Erickson does in this book is that I, I can almost always in the first like three chapters guess who did it. And that's just because I read these all the time and it's a trope. Um, and I will say that this one, I did, I did guess correctly who the murderer was, but there were enough red herrings in there that I was like, about every third chapter, I would doubt myself and I would be like, is it, wait, is it, it, oh, maybe, <laughs> um, so that was really good. Like, I really like those ones that kind of keep you guessing a bit. Um, and th the, uh. I really like Liz's character as well. So she's just a very open-hearted, very curious person, um, really wants to be helpful in the world. So I, um, I really enjoyed that about her. I really wish her husband, the veterinarian, was part of the book a little bit more. He seemed like a really kind of um, sparky character, but we only see him a couple of times. Um, so in future books, I hope that she brings him um, into that a little bit more. Um, and the other thing, the other kind of criticism that I have about this book is that we don't get to really know very many characters other than Liz herself. There wasn't a much character development um, other than her daughter, which is a really interesting relationship towards the end um, that I enjoyed. But most of the book is just kind of Liz on her own. Um, we don't get a whole lot with some of these other characters. So I'd like to see that a little bit more. I'd like to see a little more world building. Um, you know, we see like the local pet store, of course, because where's an animal rescue getting their, <laughs> getting their stuff from? Um, and you know, we see like where the murder took place and kind of the houses surrounding that, but we really don't see much of the town. And I think I would have preferred to see more of that town. So maybe that's something that she'll do, um, in future books. <clears throat> but again, um, you know, I think that she is a very likable character. I think some of the other characters are very likable. Um, I even enjoyed meeting, uh, Liz's nemesis who is, runs another animal rescue, but she's kind of doing it for profit. And Liz's is very, you know, altruistic nonprofit. And so that's kind of how they, how they clash. And that's a really interesting dynamic. I enjoyed, enjoyed watching that <laughs> for sure. Um, 
The only other criticism that I have of this book is that, so Liz is a mom, right? And I'm a mom too, I have two 13 year olds. And her son is held under suspicion of murder. And of course that's what, you know, draws her in to, um, you know, to the, to the mystery. And I get that cause I'm mama bear and like definitely would get drawn in myself. However, you know, one of the things that I saw in there, and this is probably just like a personality thing, but one of the things is like, she's just very, she, she seems very passive. Like, you know, when the cops tell her, you know, you can't do this, or you can't talk to so-and-so or you can't do this. Maybe I'm more of a mama bear than she is, but I'd be like, um, I beg your pardon. Like, you don't get to tell me, like, that's my son and I'm gonna, right? And there'd probably be some more explicatives in there. But um, I wouldn't be listening to anybody. Like, I would be going and doing whatever I had to do. And with Liz, like, there's a bunch of scenes where she and her husband are just, like, making dinner together and chatting and just, like, sitting and eating. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> like, your son is in jail. <laughs> so, um... I, you know, again, that's probably just a personality thing. I'm sure not everybody would re react the same way that I did, but I was reading this like, girl, what are you doing making soup right now? Like, do you not know where your son is? So, um, anyway, so that was the, that was the only other criticism I have. Like, again, I really enjoyed the book overall, very pet centered, loved the characters. Um, and so I hope you enjoy this book as well. And I will see you next week, uh, for the third review.